Hello everyone, Pastor Steve here. I hope you're having a great day today and a good week. Summer is finally here, and so we're excited for that. School break, summer break will be here for many students, and so please pray for the last few days of school with students taking finals. All our college students are back home. It's an exciting time of year. Please be prayed for one another and uh, pray for those who are suffering loss and grieving. There's been several deaths lately, and so uh, please reach out and encourage one another as well. We're looking forward to starting our scatter group sometime in the next month or so. As soon as school's finished, we'll start to uh, be organizing those real soon. If you are interested in hosting one of our scatter groups or being a leader in a scatter group, please let me know and uh, we'll be able to uh, talk about that and have some training sessions real soon about how and what that will look like. We've had nothing but good uh, feedback for the new model of ministry that we're looking forward to uh, starting here real soon at the Wilton Baptist Church. And so we're glad you're here today. We're, we are in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. So let's take some time to pray for one another and for those who may be having sickness right now. Let's pray for no more COVID outbreaks. And uh, there's a lot of things that we could pray for. So in your group, in your family, and in your scattered group, some are already meeting, then please take some time to pray, especially near the end of our lesson here today. So let's pray now. Father, thank you for this beautiful day to gather, to worship, to open the Bible. We pray you teach us from your word. We do pray for those who are grieving right now that great peace and encouragement would come and that your presence would be made known to them. And we pray for the gospel to advance, that people would find faith in Christ. We also pray for those who may be sick and recovering, that you give great strength and encouragement. We also pray for the new ministry models. We uh, kind of fashion our church after the first century church. We pray that, that everyone would give it a try and that you would do a great work, that you would grow the church, grow spiritually, and add to the church. And so, Lord, we pray now for your blessing and help as we study Ecclesiastes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so Ecclesiastes chapter 11, bold faith in uncertain times. Now, this last year, last 18 months or so even we we have really experienced great flexibility and if you haven't learned flexibility through covid and the crises and all the uh response to it then i don't know if you'll learn flexibility because uh, we've had to be flexible and we need to be flexible in life it's something that we've always talked about and learned what the scripture encourages as well and we need faith in these uncertain times. I mean, think about this. I just read somewhere that in China, in one of the provinces, I think it's H1N1, remember the there was a swine flu, and then there's a, a bird flu, an avian flu. Well, there's another one of those that is, uh, is, is happening again, and they shut down this region. You know, that could very easily come and affect America or affect the rest of the world, kind of like COVID-19 did. And then there's the variants. I mean, there's a lot of what ifs, a lot of possibilities in the world. And we face uncertainty every day. Solomon understood the uncertainties of life. And how do we face the uncertainties? We need bold faith. And our faith is not in faith itself. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what we've learned from Solomon in the last several chapters, and this whole book really is, that we need wisdom, but we need wisdom with God. Because life and wisdom apart from God is vanity, and life then is futile, and it loses its meaning. But we have purpose and meaning in life because of our Lord. And we have a bold faith. When faith in God goes, man, the thinker, loses his greatest thought. When faith in God goes, man, the worker, loses his strongest help. When faith in God goes, man, the sinner, loses his strongest help. When faith in, in God goes, man, the sufferer, loses his securest refuge. When faith in God goes, man, the lover, loses his fairest vision. When faith in God goes, man, the mortal, loses his only hope. Now, I'd like to read these verses to you in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. And as we read and as you scan through the words... There are 
there are uh, three times a particular phrase is used and I'd like you to find what that phrase is and I'll ask you to identify that here in just a moment. So beginning in verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Cast thy bread upon the waters for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or towards the north, in a place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirits, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whither or whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. So what are the, what's the phrase used three times? What's the phrase used three times? What's that statement? Here it is. Thou knowest not. Thou knowest not, thou knowest not. So in just six verses, three times, thou knowest not. What do we not know? Well, we don't know a lot of things in life. And he gives five examples of things that we don't have control over and we don't know the ultimate outcome of these particulars. And it's a good life object lesson for us for daily life. Thou knowest not. One person wrote, man is ignorant of the future but he must not allow his ignorance to make him so fearful that he becomes either careless or paralyzed. On the contrary, not knowing the future should make us more careful in what we plan and in what we do. So we don't know everything and we will not know everything and that's okay. We know the God who knows it all. He knows the beginning and the ending. Now there are several relevant and real life pictures, sailing to farming, deck hands to farm hands, forecasting the weather to a baby growing in his or her mother's belly. Now we need bold faith in everyday life. And that's what Solomon is expressing to us. Now something we've not yet covered about Solomon We've talked about his wisdom. We've talked about his family life and all his wives and concubines and kids. And, and we've talked about his wealth a little bit. We've talked about his wisdom and his leadership, being the king and all. But something else we haven't talked about is his business. Solomon was an entrepreneur. And he had a, a lot of business savvy about him. And he's identifying and expressing some of that in verse 1 and verse 2. He is an excellent businessman. Now, where did all the wealth come from? Well, some of it came from taxes, but not all of it. He was a good investor. He knew how to run business. He knew how to manage a kingdom and govern the people, but not all the money came from taxes. Some, but not all, because he made good investments, and he expresses as much in these verses. Good business decisions. So notice in verse 1, of these five things that he teaches us about, in verse 1, we need bold faith to give. Anytime you give, anytime you make an investment and uh, you send something away to invest, uh, we need faith for that, bold faith for that. Now, the word cast in verse 1, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Cast means to send forth, to drive, or I like this, to say goodbye, to say goodbye. So I'm going to cast my bread upon the water. Now I've heard great songs. Most people will apply this to giving, like I'm going to give, and as if giving is an investment. And by the way, it does make a, a good investment, and you'll reap dividends, but it's not always financial. It's not always readily evident when you give. And God said it'll be given back unto you, but that's not the reason we give, by the way. But he means by cast to send forth to drive to say goodbye. 
Now bread indicates food. Bread indicates a means of living, sustenance, and uh, bread we could say is, is money or investment or just giving something to help somebody is really more of an application. This verse is a business reference. It's a business reference. Now Solomon, we know in uh, the, uh, the story describing him in the Old Testament, the passages in Kings tell us about some of his business ventures and he would send ships. He would send boats into the water with grain, primarily probably wheat, and he was big into trade with other nations, other countries. So the picture here is a seaport town casting their bread upon the water. They're sending their ships out and then in, in some time it'll come back to them. The investment will come back to them. They're giving, they're saying goodbye. Bon voyage uh, will come back to them at some point. Now, Eastern bread, uh, for the most part, is in the form of cakes. And a lot of Eastern bread would be kind of round, little cake, and many times flat, uh, depending on where or what it was being cooked for. And not a big, long loaf of bread like we're familiar with here in the United States. And so bread, the idea of commerce, one person said this has the idea of commerce carried on with foreign countries, which expects to attain its object only after a long period of waiting. In a proper sense, they send their bread over the source or the surface of the water, and they're doing business in the waters, I guess you could say, like Psalm 107 verse 33 expresses. And so it's a trade concept. I'm going to trade. I'm going to make this investment. And after some time, after I send it away, after I give it away, after I cast it forth, it may come back and I'll have some, some blessing from that. The word bread is the word lechem, uh, Bethlehem, house of bread. So uh, Beth is house of, and then lechem uh, would be bread. So it's that word lechem here, bread. So I'm going to send out some grain some bread, some means or substance, uh, sustenance even, and then it may come back. It's like a good investment. So uh, many Jewish people in uh, uh, different texts over the years have summarized this. Send out your grain in ships is a paraphrase that some people would uh, uh, attribute to this passage. Now verse 2 suggests that he spreads out this bread or spreads out this investment in seven or eight different ships or seven or eight different ways. We'll talk about that in the next point about diversification. Now, this proverb, cast your bread upon the waters, can be applied in several ways. So here's the application of uh, business ventures. Business ventures. So how are we going to uh, make decisions for our business? Well, if you're not casting any bread, you're not going to have anything return. If you're not with bold faith stepping out and making something happen or doing something in business, then nothing will happen. Okay, so if you're not doing anything, nothing will happen. But if you're bold, if you have bold faith, you cast that bread out there, then it's likely that something will return. Now, giving is another application whenever we give. Now, hoping for a return and if i give something then maybe you know god will bless me in, in great ways and it's, that's kind of a greedy or selfish way to look at it we should give out of love and out of uh, devotion to the lord and out of love for other people to give to them to make investments etc with our finances and to help people out even and so uh, giving could be an application of this in Luke 6, 35, Jesus said, Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. So when you give, hope for nothing again. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 9, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not gradually or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Here's another application. Besides business and uh, giving to help, oh, to serve God, to help others, how about this? Patience, being patient. After a long time, you shall find it after many days. Another application is we need to be patient. Here's a little chart for Sermon Audio. And uh, we love this media player. It's a great tool. And a lot of people are looking at it. You can see the numbers here just for last month. 
Now, if we never posted, and we post almost uh, six days a week, we'll be posting something on Sermon Audio. And look at those numbers there. Isn't that amazing? I think it's just amazing. We keep putting messages online, and who knows how God will use them? Well, I know God will. He knows how He will use them. For example, here, we had we have 40 different countries listening. That's just incredible. 1,800 mobile plays. So a lot of people play it. Sermon Audio plays it kind of like a podcast, and so people are doing that. 306 video plays. Two, uh, 2,905, just last month, total plays of messages from our Sermon Audio. That does not include our Facebook and others. And look at the little numbers down there. Lifetime stats, 6,100, 974 um, is the number there. So 61,000 different listens and we've had this sermon audio maybe 10 years or so so what a blessing that is and let's pray that God would use as we're casting the bread of life upon the waters of life that people would hear the gospel and Christians would be encouraged so number two then we need to be bold in faith to give bold in faith to invest verse two give a portion to seven and also to eight for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. The word give here, to give, to put, to set, to abandon. Kind of like um, to say goodbye, to abandon, and just let it go. And he's talking about these ships again. That's the same picture. And Solomon wouldn't put all of his grain just in one ship. He would spread it out. He wouldn't go to just one seaport or just to one other country. He said, find seven or even better, eight. The message here is diversification. When you make an investment, make sure that you have faith, faith to diversify, to spread it out. Diversify is the lesson. So notice the ascending numerals, seven, then eight, speak of trying every avenue there is and then adding one more. The background may be of that of generosity, giving portions to the poor, or it may continue the imagery of commerce and refer to the many ventures of the businessmen. Despite our ignorance of the future, now is the time to act. And what a great summary of these verses. Solomon did not put all his grain into one ship to one location. He spread it all out. If one investment fails, then the others may succeed. It's like not putting all your eggs in one basket. That's another way people have said this. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. What if all the ships are sunk? What if the, you send some to one place and there's a storm? And so diversification is a good way to live. Now, friends, we have faith in God, that God will provide, that God will uh, make our investments succeed. But even if we have faith that these things will succeed, God says it's good to diversify. And the wisest man tells us it's a good way to do business. So bold faith to give, bold faith to invest. I hope that you look at your portfolio, your retirement funds, and spread it out. And that's a message for a different time. Behind me, we have different books about how to invest. If you want some guidance, some Bible encouragement about that, uh, set up a time. Let's talk and find ways to do that in your portfolio for retirement and investing. All right, number three, bold faith for the storms of life. Verse three, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. That tree is not going to get up and move by itself. It's kind of a fatalistic verse, isn't it? And you know what? The storm is going to happen. If rain happens, it'll happen. If a, if a storm happens and a tree falls, then it's going to be where it is at. Somewhat fatalistic. As one person comment, commented, neither an ominous outlook, clouds full of rain, nor the unexpected event of a tree falling must hinder our enthusiasm for life. We cannot control the events when we anticipate them, the clouds and the rain, nor can we precisely determine how events will work out. The tree falls where it will. Last uh, season, we had a tree fall down on my apple tree. Our neighbor's tree fell on my apple tree and killed it and uh, really knocked it over. And I was sad about that. Yesterday, I planted a replacement apple tree. So pray that thing will grow fast and it would be great. And we diversify. There's actually, we have two trees. They have to cross-pollinate as well. But trees fall. Uh, life happens. Storms come up. 
And so we need bold faith in the storms of life. Now, this is such an important thing. The Where the tree fall, we can't determine when or what will happen. We can't determine that. We can't control everything. So for the perfectionist, for the person who's OCD, um, you, you want to control everything and have everything in the palm of your hand, that's unrealistic. And, and you need to stop. We need to stop when we're like that because life is out of our control. But friends, life is not out of God's control. And we need bold faith in the storms of life. You know, it'll be okay. You'll be okay. If you're overly controlling of stuff, it'll be okay to let that problem, that concern, that thing that's out of your control, just give that to the Lord. You know, you can't control life, but you can control how you respond to life and to the storms of life. You can either react and, and try to become even more controlling of what's happening or controlling of the people around you, or you can respond to it and give it to God and let God do His work in and through that circumstance. You control how you either react or respond. We don't need to and can control every aspect of life, so stop doing that. Psalm 37, 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He will bring it to pass. So trust God. Have bold faith in the Lord. God knows what will happen, and God will give you grace to accept what will happen and there's going to be surprises and tragedies and things that happen but we need to trust god number four bold faith to be productive verse four tells us he that observeth the wind shall not sow he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap if you've ever planned any outdoor activity whether it's a picnic or a ball game or a special outing you know sometimes the the turmoil in your heart when you look at the forecast and it looks like it's either going to snow or rain or uh, bad weather or it's going to be too cold or too hot and you kind of wonder what should we do checking the forecast constantly can hinder progress checking the forecast constantly uh, we need to be able to make plans and be flexible with those plans we need to be more decisive when making decisions. And sometimes it looks like a rain and, and I'll, I'll comment to somebody and we're standing out by a ball field or out next to a bonfire or something and, and we're looking at it and wondering what should we do. Well, it's, it's, it says 100% rain, but it's not raining here. Sometimes it says 15% rain, but it's 100% where you are at. Now we can look, I think it's good, look at the forecast, look at what is projected. But did you know you can have the best plans and those plans always change? And we need to be flexible. And at the same time, we need to be decisive. Let's have some action here. If all you do is look and say, what if? Well, there's a storm. It's impossible. Then you'll get nothing accomplished in life. So be decisive. The paralysis of analysis has stopped many of people from doing what is right at the right time and the right way. Well, James 4, 17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Well, what if, what if uh, something's out of our control? Well, if there's something you should do that's right, and things are, that are out of our control, it may influence that. Well, still choose to do what is right. Be bold to continue to be productive. Well, what if I get sick? And what if it doesn't work out? And what if, and what if, and what if? No, make some good plans to be flexible and to still accomplish something that God would have accomplished in your life. Then number five, bold faith to follow the works of God. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. The word wind and spirit are the same word in Hebrew. And he's speaking of the wind in verse 4. The word spirit is used in verse 5. Again, he's talking about the weather. Uh, you don't know how. And also like how the Spirit of God works. There's also an application or extension to understand uh, how the Spirit of God works in our life. And so bold faith to follow the works of God. Verse 6, in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand for thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that or whether they both shall be alike good we 
We cannot explain the works of God. That's the point of verses 5 and 6. Can you explain the works of God? Try it. To explain it away to somebody. Even with weather patterns being somewhat consistent. I mean, weather patterns, there's a pattern. They're not always the same. There are variables. There are things that change. They're not constant. They're not constant and for certain or for sure. But God is for certain. He is for sure. And we can't really explain the why. Now, we can explain the how, the weather patterns work and things like this, but we can't explain the why. How about the baby in the, in the mother's womb? Can you explain the how? How does, how does a baby come about? Yeah, we can explain the how, but why? Why does the biology work? We can't explain that. You see, a lot of people try to explain the weather, or they try to explain biology and the birth of children just in a way that's, that's scientific, and, and even a lot of times scientific is really based on an unobjective faith, a faith apart from God. And Solomon's whole point is, throughout this book, try to explain life apart from God. You can't. You can't. We know how things work, but we don't know the why. Why does it work? Why is it working out the way? Well, it's because it's the way that God made it. He's the one who created us. He's the one who made us. It's the work of God. God made poss the possibility of the conception of life. And He is the why. He's the who to the how everything is happening to begin with. And so what do we know from verse 6? We need, if, since we can't explain it, we need to encourage bold faith to follow God. Work hard, work early, work hard and smart even into the evening. We are not certain until the end of the day or even after a long period of time if what we're doing and what our labor is involved with and how hard we're working, we don't know if it's going to pay off or not. In, in the sense of, is this a good investment? Is this a bad investment? Or am I being effective here? You know, I think about people teaching the Bible and, and you're sharing the gospel and you don't know when or how long it'll take, when you'll ever see fruit from that. But you want to keep laboring and keep toiling and keep working. Work hard, work smart, diversify, be patient, wait on the Lord, invest in healthy things. I think it's very interesting. Jesus said in John 6, verse 28 and 29, then they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent, to believe on Jesus. So thank the Lord for bold faith. If you have faith today, that's something from God. Lord, increase our faith as a prayer. Keep hearing the Bible listening to the Bible, reading the Bible, studying it on your own and with your small group and in your church. And keep doing that and ask the Lord to help you have bold faith in the everyday ventures of life. We need it. Please take some time to pray and visit with your group and answer these discussion and application questions. God bless.